if I want to add an I, try to add an I and return whether this succeeded. Well, we could do this public boolean add I. And it's going to look just like the other methods. Uh, the other the body method that we wrote although it's a little bit different because we can only add an I if we have a head and we only want to add an I if we have less than two eyes right if we have zero or one eyes then we want to add another so we would say if we have a head and if the number of eyes we have is less than two then what we want to do is we want to say increase the number of eyes we have. And we'll return true because we successfully added an eye. However, if that's not the case, then we want to return false. What that means is either we don't have a head or we already have a head and two eyes, in which case this fails. Eh, that wasn't so painful. You can always skip around the video. What if we want to add a head? Try to add a head and return whether this succeeded. Well, we could say public boolean add head. Once again, we have to check I see. So this isn't as straightforward as I thought. What Peter has us doing is saying if we have a body and you can write this two ways. You can write not head Right? That means it takes the value of head and then the exclamation point does the reverse. So if we have a head, this becomes false. We could also write head equal to false. Right? That's the sort of the same thing. Then we would say, now I have a head and we successfully added one. Otherwise, return false. Try to add a feeler and return whether this succeeded. Public boolean add feeler. That's not how I do it. So if we have a head and the number of feelers fellers, feelers that we have is less than two, then we can add a feeler. Otherwise, we should return false. And I forgot to say that if we do this, it's successful. So you see what's going on? We have to have a body before we can have a head, we have to have, and so on and so forth. And let's do one more. We need six legs. Public boolean add leg. I'm going to leave the comment to you. If we have a body and the number of legs we have is less than six, then we'll increase the number of legs we have and say yes, we were able to do it. Otherwise, we're going to say nope. We already have enough legs for our beetle. Thank you very much. Public boolean add tail if we have a body and we don't have a tail, translating from the shorthand version in the text, excuse me, then we'll say that we now have a tail. We'll return true because we successfully added one. Otherwise, we'll say, nope, we can't add a tail. Ooh, and this is the big one. Public boolean is complete. Now, whenever a method asks a question, and it's part of what I'm not entirely pleased about with respect to this example code, is add i. Well, okay, it's doing something different. It's returning a boolean if it's successful. That's good. Okay, that's good practice. Um, when we just want to know is something true, we usually preface our method with the word is. It's, it's a convention, so we say is complete. What that means is it returns true or false 
based on some parameters. So what we're going to do is we're going to return the result of this logical expression. If we have a body, so if that is true, and the number of eyes we have is, six, uh, is two, and the number of feelers we have is two, and, it <laughs> goes on, we have a head, and I'm going to put that on the next line. Um, so it's easy for me to see that there's a logical and. And the number of legs equals six, and there's a tail. Well, we're returning the result of that. And I forgot a parenthesis. If all of those things are true, then the whole expression will be true, and we'll return it. So, if this is true, and 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 this is true, then we return something that is true. If we're missing any of those things, uh-oh, if we're missing any of those things down here, it will return false. And you can see I tried to compile, forgot a parenthesis, right there. I'll bet I forgot more than one in this code. And this is a good one, class interface or enum expected. Now here's what's happening. See this? See this bracket? That one has closed this bracket. You can't tell because it's off the screen. But what's happening is now the Java compiler is saying, this should be another class. Why isn't this a class? It looks like a method. And the reason it's doing that is because I have an extra bracket in the middle of my code. If I get rid of it, it compiles because now the end bracket is in the right place. So let's see, new beetle. Okay. Ooh. What happens if I print it? I have no beetle parts yet. All right. So what happens if I come back here and I say, add a body? Good. It added a body. And I print it. There's my body. Good to go do it. What should we add next? Can I add an eye? No, because I don't have a head. Can I add a head? Yes! Can I print my beetle? <gasps> Ooh, I have a head and a body. So now I should be able to add an eye. Good, that worked. And I can print it. And we can see I have an eye and a head and a body. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Well, why not? Let's see. Add eye and uh, add a feeler. I should be able to add two feelers. Add feeler. Can I add a third feeler? This should fail. No, I can't. Good, good, good. All right, I have a feeler, a head. Do I have all my eyes? Yep, I seem to have all my eyes. Uh, can I add a tail at this point? I can. Am I allowed to have two tails? Nope. Can I have some legs? Where's leg? That's one leg. Two legs. Three legs. Four legs. And five legs. What happens if I print it now? Missing a leg. Is it complete? No, it is not complete. Oops. Sorry. So I add one more leg. True. All right. Print that beetle. That looks like a complete beetle. Is it complete? Yes. So I won the game, and you didn't, and that's the way it is. Um, there's still the main method, which actually ties, uh, sorry, the beetle game class, and I'll do that perhaps in a separate video. This one got long, but hopefully it was of use to you for purposes of review.